Hello everybody, Allah Hapa. The name is Abbas Tamori. By now you know who I am. I did promise to stop and quit, but uh, some of you guys don't let me go. I don't know that's a good news or a bad news. Uh, what is today? Today is the 3rd of January, 2013. Hmm. Tom is 1220. Well, I begin to say that uh, I'm such a sucker for uh, learning. You don't understand what I'm saying. I have a problem to learn things from the Baha'is. I do read books, you know, in many areas that, um, you know, the authors have written there's a good access to them, but it's not enough as much as I would like to have. Uh, but <clears throat> I find it is very hard uh, to find somebody that can teach me something. For example, I brought all of these ideas in 400 videos, whatever. Uh, I'm not challenged. Certain people, of course, you know, they're belligerent. Some of them regurgitate and repeat themselves. Others are totally redundant. Uh, some, however, come with some good ideas. It's rare. I had a discussion with a young Baha'is, whom I respect a lot, a very prominent uh, young fellow. And uh, he was questioning me, rightfully so that how did I extrapolate a general guardianship in the Baha'i Faith from reading one of the passages of Shavi Effendi? You know that I've said there are three types of guardianships. There's divine guardianship of Shavi Effendi, the last author a divine author of the Baha'i Faith, and then I said there is a specific guardianship of elders. They're not infallible, but they're specialists. And then I said there is a general guardianship of people, uh, that all of it is uh, happening through Baha'u'llah. I said divine guardianship is the chosen one and appointed one of Shovi Effendi. Uh, the guardianship of the elders, they are on their own. They have to realize their own message on their own. They are kind of like prophet of God. They have to understand their own message. Uh, with the difference that they do not have a new message, but they protect and follow the manifestation of God, which is Baha'u'llah. And then I said, Baha'u'llah also, not surely offended, but Baha'u'llah also uh, guides and appoints and selects whatever inspires ordinary people to be guardians for duration of the Baha'i Faith. What I mentioned about this third level of guardianship, which is uh, general guardianship, I was referring to a writing in the light of guidance. There it is, under the special institution we have we have it on the page 310 which is those with the guardianship so you could see the other pages Well, everything is the first time. I apologize for not having enough light here. In fact, I'm going to put the other lights on as well.
Uh, so we have all the lights. It just tells you that uh, <clears throat> I'm not so prepared. I realized this only when I started to read that I don't have enough lights around because I can't see good. And this is the writing of Shelby Effendi, uh, which is explaining to a person questioning the guardianship. And essentially, Shelby Effendi says, if you believe the communication of God takes place through a human being we call him prophet, we just simply can and should accept that the same being, which is the prophet after his ascension, will also guide individuals as his guardians to continue his mission on the planet for, uh, I call them like a patches to the main window. I'm going to read this. Acceptance of the day that will not be followed by night. This is a quotation Shoghi Effendi has taken from the Will and Testament of Abdul Baha. He says Baha'i faith is the day is the, that will not be followed by night. That means we never will have darkness in our faith. It will be always light. Of course, this means a spiritual light. So he goes, he says he feels that if ponder more deeply about the fundamentals of the divine revelation, she will also come to understand the guardianship. Once the mind and the heart have grasped the fact that God guides men through a mouthpiece, a human being, a prophet, infallible and unerring, it's only logical projections of this acceptance to also accept the station of Abdul Baha and the guardians. The guardians are the evidence of the maturity of mankind in the same in the sense that at long last men progress to the point of having one world and of needing one world management for human affairs in the spiritual realm, they also have reached the point where God could leave in human hands, i.e. the guardians guided directly by the Bab and Baha'u'llah, as the Master states in his will. The affair of his fate for this dispensation, this is what is meant by this is the day which will not be followed by the night. In this, dispens in this dispensation, divine guidance flows onto us in this world after the Prophet's ascension through first the master, which is Abdul Baha, and then the guardians. If a person can accept Baha'u'llah's function, it should not present any difficulty to them to also accept that he has ordained a divinely guided individual in matters pertaining to his faith. This young Baha'i was asking me that and says that not too fast, Mr. Elder. Sure, there are guardians to be coming, but in this place, in here, there is no variance. There's no point that these guardians should not be appointed by the Shoghi Effendi who was a guardian. In other words, this is the guardianship that he has already explained in the World Order of Baha'u'llah, where Shoghi Effendi says, guardians are supposed to be the eldest son of an actual appointed guardian such as himself. And this will have to continue forever and till the durations of the Baha'i faith. So it means Shoghi Effendi's son will be the next guardian and the son of his son and goes so on and so, on and so forth. All of them are directly appointed. And this, where Shoghi Effendi speaks of the guardians, he says it means exactly the same thing. There's no deviations from the previous writing of Shoghi Effendi that we can extrapolate a divine, a general guardianship. So he was saying that he was objecting at me that when you're saying guardian, guardians are appointed by Shoghi Effendi and then appointed by Baha'u'llah separately, he says there's no set, there's, there are no two sets of guardians according to this text. There are only one sets of guardians. The one that Shoghi Effendi has to appoint, which he didn't. He was trying to say that 
do not create another source for the guardians. Not based on this text here. This text does not say. So, all of these guardians, which he says, show uh, Baha'u'llah after his passing, when, you know, ascension, what did he do? He chose Abdul Baha. And then after that, the guardians, which means the chosen ones, the appointed one, Abdul Baha, which is Shoghi Effendi. Then Shoghi Effendi would have to appoint his or another branches. In this matter, we have to continue the same way. This is the same thing, he said. There's nothing general here about it. This is the same guardianship as it was explained in the other places, like in the order of Howl. So, I said, good. Let's find out some other essence of this writing here. The very essence of this writing this quotation is to say that the high fate is the day of God that will not be followed, which means by darkness. According, according to you, there is no successors for Shawi Effendi, which means guardianship is closed, file is closed. Therefore, we cannot have any other guardians according to you. He said, well, according to the writings. He said, this one, he said, does not give us the permission to think there are other guardians. There is any other source for it, he said, because it's not saying that. Nowhere here it says that these guardians are not going to be appointed by me. Because all this guardianship for the Baha'is was in a way that it comes in the holy family of Baha'u'llah. This is no deviation from that. It's the same thing, he says. I said, okay. So, well, if there is no guardianship according to you, there's no other source, there's no other guardian, then what do we do? Then we have to say that we are living in a dark time because there's no guardians. According to the present Baha'i concept, there is no guardians. What do we do? Then we live in darkness. You see, if we go this route, we do have a problem. We have a problem that we're living in darkness. We have a problem that uh, Shoghi Effendi says, if there's no guardianship, okay, and there's no guardians, we're done, it says. There's the, the fate of God, basically, he says, is gone. See if I can find these things quickly in some of these places. Uh, it's a very good book. It's called The World Order of Baha'u'llah, especially the last book, which is The Dispensation of Baha'u'llah, where it talks about the uh, Baha'i administration, uh, where it um, says, now let's see this, the same writing. The words from the institution of guardianship, the world order of Baha'u'llah would be mutilated and permanently deprived of that hereditary principle, which, as Abdul Baha has written, has been invariably upheld by the law of God. In all the divine dispensation quotes, he states in a tablet addressed to a follower of the faith in Persia, quote, the eldest son had been given extraordinary distinctions, even the station of prophethood had been his birthright, end of quotation. Without such an institution, the integrity of the faith would be imperiled. And the stability of the entire fabric would be gravely endangered. Its prestige would suffer. It means required to enable it to take a long and uninterrupted view over a series of their generation would be completely lacking. And the necessary guidance to define the sphere of the legislative action of its elected representative would be totally withdrawn. So we know, if you don't have guardianship, the guidance that is necessary for universal laws of justice to work, it's withdrawn. The fate of God is mutilated, he says. Basically, everything is imperiled. This is the estate of the affair at the moment. So we have to dig in to see. 
what do we do? The solution I'm looking. Many people have objections about being inspired by God. This is a very, very, very serious uh, matter for the Baha'is to understand. This idea cannot be connected to God and I cannot be inspired by God is absolutely the principles of all the faiths in the past that we can, we should. In the Baha'i faith, there's a practical curriculum to get there. You call it seven valleys, four valleys. Look at the <clears throat> book of the certitude. The entire goal of Baha'u'llah is to make us to become manifestation of God, a general manifestation, not a manifestation to bring a new religion, but some who manifest the power of God. Baha'u'llah quotes from Bob in his book, Badi, has not translated yet. Unfortunately, these books, uh, similar to Book of Certitude, which was a reference to the Muslims' problem, this one is a reference to the Bobbies. In this book, he quotes Bob, he says, if God knows a person in the earth can hear his voice, can hear the message, for not for a second of a second of a second, he would hesitate to make him to hear it. What is this telling us? God is not that mysterious, mystified matter that has been in the past. God has been demystified in the Baha'i faith. He's simply an intelligent being like us, who has willpower like us, who are just 70 years and he is infinitely older. But it makes us very much the same in a way, because we do have the willpower just as he has given it to us. He actually doesn't know what we're going to do. If he knows tonight we're going to kill somebody and doesn't stop us, it's a bad God. Then he has given us the willpower purposely so we can do our own things what i what all i am trying to tell you that in the baha'i faith please read it there are books on this issue that we can actually contact god every time you have a dream of baha'u'llah you have to have an special prayer because that vision is a true vision how many baha'is that i know had seen the vision of baha'u'llah more than thousands the entire Baha'i faith history is full of the visions of the people through their vision they came to the faith of God and understood it. By God, just read it. It's all over from the East and the West. There are so many people that have contacted God according to their capacities. Baha'i faith is trying to make us a receiver to receive this general message of God, which is like a shower, is like an electron. If you can have the reception, you get it. All of us can. All of us. This is the purpose of the Baha'i Revelation, to de demystify the matter. In a scientific way, I've explained it. Look at the video 57 about communication with God. There's nothing baffling about this. A hundreds of times Baha'u'llah and Abdul Baha and Shawi Effendi and Bob have acknowledged and recognized certain writings, certain acts, certain heroism that has been inspired by God to the believers. Thousands of times. So it's a very common thing. Because one of the Baha'is are telling you that when you say I'm communicating with God or something like that, they think you're sick. Yeah, depending on what you think God is. But if you demystify the matter, it's very simple. Why shouldn't there be people uh, like guardians? In Islam, my God, we have a barrage of them. There's one million book written. Many of them, Baha'u'llah has used their writing in his quotations, such as Rumi, Attar, Hafez, Saadi, Sanai, goes on. They were all guardians. In Islam, they don't call them guardians. They're different names. But Muhammad said, Ulamai ummati afsalu min anbiya'i bani Israel. My learned of my people are greater 
more graceful than the people of the Israelites. And they were true prophets of God, such as Ishmael or uh, John the Baptist or whoever. Eskel and uh, Daniel and whatnot. He says, my people are. This is not lacking in the Baha'i faith. This is just a general phenomenon. Okay. Now, when we talk about guardians, my dear, it's a little bit different when you're talking about guardianship. It's two different things. Not every guardian can create a guardianship of his own. We don't have that. In the Baha'i faith, unlike any religions of the past, very unique, everything has been administrated. Religions of the past were like a, a wilderness with a mountain, the roads, similar to the way people were living. Baha'i faith is similar to our metropolises. There are many avenues in it. There are many stop signs, stop lights, red light, policemen, all kinds. It is like that. This is why Baha'u'llah is created by his own divine will, the institution, to channelize this. The water of the river, now it's been coming into the plumbing of our houses. We drink it. We refine it. It's exactly like that is in the Baha'i faith. There are natural powers, natural bestow bestowals, natural inspirations, geniuses of the people, many of them in many, many kinds. Well, naturally, if they come out, every one of them can grasp a group of people and then we have an anarchy in the world. This is why there is an institution of guardianship. A building designated for that. So, what was the answer I heard from the Council of Adirian? Is that this is the place of guardians. Listen to this very good, dear friends. He says, and a third building shall be erected, which is the center of the interpretation. It doesn't say the center of the interpreters. These two are very important. Shoghi Effendi was an interpreter. His appointed one would be infallible, just like himself, and he would be an interpreter. They would not be able to go to this third building designated as Darul Welaya in Arabic, which means house of guardianship. Because this is the center of interpretation not the center of interpreters. If the chosen ones, an appointed one of Shoghi Effendi, would have to be residing in this building, then it would have been the center of the interpreters. It doesn't say that. This is the center of interpretation. Which brings to us that people can do interpretation without being an interpreter officially or a guardian officially. Don't we elect nine people? We send them to the Universal House of Justice and they can enact the laws as equal as to that of the Baha'u'llah in being infallible and unerring. Nine men are capable of doing that, aren't they? Do we call the prophets? No. We're just a simple human being. But well, the same thing is here. Interpretation is not as hard as legislating the laws, in my opinion. So, the, this is why the five elders are saying, if these principles of the guardianship, as it is said in this book, would to be accepted and embedded, as a fabric of our faith, we have to understand. God says here, this is very important, look at this again. He says, in the spiritual realm, they have also reached the point where God could lead in human hands. By the human hands, here, does not mean 
an infallible person. That means me and you, all of us, any one of us. Because Baha'u'llah is not an ordinary human being. This is not a part of our faith. We believe he has a third character called Holy Ghost. We do not know what that is. Same as with Abdul Baha and Shoghi Effendi and the Bab. All the four of them. There's something in them that we don't have. Because they're infallible. This is big words. It's part of the doctrine of the faith. But ordinary human being, which again Shoghi Effendi in this book says, they can interpret but they remain to be a human, essentially a human being. He goes further, he says they could be infinitely inferior. If somebody could be infinitely inferior and yet interpret, then interpretation is an art. It's like writing a music. A person who can read the book and has the power to dig into it and put things around, like I do, and uh, extrapolate new ideas. That's interpretation. So this is where we should understand. The center of the interpretation for the building designated in Universal Law of Justice, it could not be the place of Shoghi Effendi. I had another discussion that I had to say to this young uh, Baha'i, whom I sincerely thank and show my gratitude because he showed me something. I wasn't paying as much of attention. He's right. If you like to go stay in a court of law, he says, this particular writing that I read, that is not tantamount to a general guardianship that I'm extrapolating. I have to use some other criteria, some other premises, as he said, in order to get to it. One of which that means I have to be myself an elder, an interpreter, official, in order to say this could mean something else. Otherwise, it would not be acceptable. I said, very well. But at the same time, don't take, my, don't take my word, okay, as I am the interpreter, I'm dead now, so I'm a hero and everybody has to listen. No. My conclusion of the writing is no different from you. No different from any other scientist in the world. I'm just looking at the logic and the philosophy underlying it to see how we can use it. I look at the book of law, how, how I can decode it. So, if I want to have a guardianship that, according to this writing, to continue till end of the Baha'i faith, or else we're going to be in a darkness, spiritual darkness, or our faith is gone, I have to understand there has to be some way that the guardianship could continue from the people who would be otherwise called guardians by an authoritative channel. So, how these guardians are coming, a lot of people, they feel they had a dream. I have this gentleman, uh, that from Australia, he calls me. He says, I had a dream that the Ark of the Covenant, I have to take it right in the Mount of Carmel. Then they allowed him to dig into it. Who am I to question him? Hmm? Can I say that he's white? He's Aussie? It can't be. Well, that would be discrimination. Can I do that? Not really. I have to see how it flows. Okay. So, people feeling they have a dream they're guardians. They read it, they feel they are. Some other people, they may not even say they are. What do we do about this? Is this a natural phenomenon for sure? It has been always, and all the religions, a lot of learning, a lot of geniuses, they come down. It has to be put together in an organized manner that everyone can benefit from it and everyone can stay away from its harm. Because these are guardians, but they're not infallible. What do you do? Then, like a miner, you have to see what's right and get it out. Baha'u'llah has given us what? He has given us a measures, a tool. It's called logic and science. When it's logical, when it's scientific, then it's acceptable. Then it's part of my faith. So these fellows, 
these guys, men and women, are all referred to an institution elected by the people called, interna uh, called the Universal House of Guardianship, which is the Order of Shobi Effendi, a building designated in Israel, in Haifa. We as elders said they have to be women. I gave you last night the reasons and, uh, you know, extrapolations of the idea from the explanations of Abdul Bahad that they extrapolated. This means, you know, women. And it's useful to the Baha'is. It helps the cause. So they will entitle, they accept these claims, they verify it. Just like the Pope, uh, Church of the you know, Vatican, they call people saints. These things will continue in the Baha'i, but in the different fashions. These people would be called guardians. Sometimes after they de their death, sometimes before their death. Sometimes the title is given to them and they're unexpectedly. Sometimes their claim would be accepted. These are the people that are learned. In the Baha'i faith, we have learned and then we have rulers. These are the learned. The entire Baha'i faith is designed to create these people. That's why there's a seven valleys. <laughs> That's why there's four valleys. That's why there's so many other books so much about the spiritual ascendancy and climax of it for mankind what to become to manifest the power of god in many ways in form of music in form of singing in form of drawing in form of uh, writing discovery all kind of ways we have to be get to our god this alienation of god from ourselves by two groups of people scientists and the religions of the past is annihilated now. We're not going to hear the BS of the scientists, nor the uh, clamor of this so-called uh, uniform-wearing individual call themselves religious people. These two people have totally, uh, uh, basically, uh, tainted the whole system idea. No. We're not going to go away from God because of the scientists and because of the bad religious leader. We're going to look at the matter scientifically, reasonably, and we're going to get connected to him. We need him. Every time I dream of Baha'u'llah, of course the God that you see would be in the form of Baha'u'llah, because that's his manifestation today. Thousands of people I know that's in this dream. The dreams all came true. How could it not be right then, you see? So this universal laws of guardianship, this is how it can be done through these issues. Don't say that Shoei Effendi did not choose, then there isn't anyone. What about the guardianship of the elders? And then there are other questions. How do we know how many people say elders? Who is elder? I am the head of the five-pointed star. I have two hands and two legs. Together becomes five elders. The previous two, they became my leg. The head on its own cannot do anything. But yet all the information is in the head. You want to know if I'm an elder? Baha'u'llah has given me the weapon. Has given me the criteria. Is my writing, is my knowledge, is my past, is the solution that I've brought from the Baha'i faith, from within the book, that the stereogram, that hidden message, I decoded it for you. You know it is there. Just need a little bit of fairness. Okay? So, once I see these two guys, they get my idea. As I told you, one of them would say that I never believe and accept it. You are an elder or even Baha'u'llah is true. He told me that. If you are so insisting on this, just tell to Baha'u'llah to come to my dream and tell me you're an elder. Is that so much to ask from a person who believes in God? I told him, I don't know there is or there is not. But I, from the God that I know, it would be belligerence on my part if I ask him to do this. I will not even think of it. It's his business. If he wants, he does. He doesn't. I'm... Uh, 
a total subordinate to his will. And then he calls after three months that he had a dream that actually I'm the elder. Baha'u'llah told him I'm an elder. Then I told him, have you ever thought that if you were not in your dream as you had seen, I would not be known? I said, yes. I said, this is, you are the fulfillment of the word of Baha'u'llah. If there are two people in a city, that would be good enough. He got the message. He said, yes, I know now. I saved you from being buried by the Baha'is. I am an elder of God. I told him, not sign and seal. And the other one, the same thing. He totally accepted and agreed. These two serious hotties that they would not go and are signing this thing. So they are both elders of God. Are they the best that is available? By far not. <laughs> you know. I'm not even one person of a Baha'i that I know. His name is Muhammad Ali Ghambari in India. I'm not even one person of him. Or consular action in India. I cannot even come close to him. They are seriously dignified individuals, and many thousands of them, literally thousands of them among the Baha'is, all over the world right now, in places they're pioneering, and uh, teaching the cause of God, leaving their monies. What kind of an abasement is this? That we come to say that somebody is elder, therefore he's on the top of what? I refuse to be on the top of anything. Just don't want it. I'm actually refusing to be an elder. I went and I said to Universal Law Services, I don't want that this damnation. I said my resignation was not accepted by Shaw Evan. That no. So, what is so different about an elder? Baha'u'llah was here. He chose thousands of people to do a lot of different things. Every one of them are messenger of Baha'u'llah for one thing or other. Every time show we offend it sends people around Abdul Basin. If you read in the books, there's literally thousands of them. They're not different from an elder. My specialty is that others don't. I'm just too curious of a guy to get into finding an answer. I literally get sick. I can't sleep when there's something in my mind that I have to solve. Do you understand this? This is why I said Eureka and I found it in my opinion. And Baha'u'llah was not discriminating against me. He said, whoever find it first, um, he is the one. But of course, you know, you have to go through it to have some minimum requirement of a big Baha'i. I've, I've been trying to have that. So, this is what we need. To have this institution of guardianship from the way, Shoei Effendi says, that it has to be from his descendant into the hand of the general people. Why? Because everything I said about it is a matter of fact. All of us are capable of that. All of us. Invariably. Every one of us. Not a single person on this planet is exempted from, from being able to communicate with God and carry His message. Little, big, whatever. In any shape or form such numerous number of the people, then would have to be organized, isn't it? That is why there is an universal loss of guardianship, a building designated by Shoei Effendi. Okay, so enough said. I had another problem with another individual Baha'i that uh, is very respected individual, brought many people into Baha'i faith. Me and her, we don't agree in certain areas, but as she was mentioning, God, can I find it now? That would be a challenge to get into the light of guidance and find that for me right now. Because I took the paper. Okay. It is about this, uh, is about this uh, matter of the elders, of course that I guess we discussed it once, that Shoei Effendi says that there are four and twenty elders. It is in this book. God, how do I find it now? 
I took my paper away. Uh, Shaul Effendi says here, he says regarding the four and twenty elders, as Master has stated in a tablet, they are the Bob, they are the Bob, and eighteen letters of living, and five others who would come in future. So far, we do not know who these five others are. She was trying to emphasize that this is not the word of Shoghi Effendi, but Shoghi Effendi has translated and quoting Abdul Baha on this matter. So, might as well just read the word of Abdul Baha instead. I said, well, no, my dear, because he says at the end, so far we do not know who these five others are. This is the word of Shoghi Effendi. Along with a couple of other quotations, I received from the Universal Laws of Justice that they do agree. The number of the elders remaining by Shoghi Effendi had been counted to be five. They, the Universal Laws of Justice, or a committee working for them, uh, they send a letter and communications which is on the website. If you look in, on my website in the media under the document, you'll sign to see that the letter all in uh, English. That Universal House of Justice tries to explain who these elders are, and then they bring a quotation that by Abdul Baha that Abdul Baha has actually appointed another person called Hadi Ghazmi, uh, called uh, uh, Mirza Taghi Khan Vakil Dole, the person <coughs> who built the first Baha'i temple in Ishkabad of Russia. And this gentleman was a cousin of the Baba, very highly respected uh, Baha'i. He was appointed as one of the elders of Baal. Universal Laws of Justice said, Mr. Temori, Bob, 18 letters of the living, 19, and this new one added, it becomes 20. Therefore, there are four elders to be recognized, not five, as you're saying. Therefore, we question you question your eldership and lack of your knowledge about this. I said to them, one of the original 18 became the enemy of Baha'u'llah. His name is Hadi Ghazvini. Baha'u'llah calls him all the names that you can. His, his name is, starts with H, Hadi. He says, oh, the one whose first letter of name represents the hell. Thou hast taken bail for your God. He was with the arch enemy of Baha'u'llah, Azal, cleaning up. God knows they caused a lot of seditions, you know, and inflicted Baha'u'llah problem. They were not just non-Baha'i, but they were enemies. How could you call this an elder? Elders are holy persons. They are reigning eternally. They're sitting on their divine throne. This guy is enemy of Baha'u'llah. Of course he's not one of them. And this is a similarity, another similarity between Jesus Christ and Bob that one of his followers faltered. You know that. And then a new one, Timothy, I believe, came back. So, the same thing happened in the Baha'i faith. So there are still five because one new came in, one old one went out. But the point this friend was making is that Shoghi Effendi says 18 letters of living. You cannot get Hadi Ghazvini out of the list, is she said. Shoghi Effendi says, Bob and 18 letters of living. Hadi Ghazvini, be the enemy of Baha'u'llah, was one of the letters of living. You cannot take him out of list because a higher authority, bigger than you, Shoghi Effendi says 18. You have to count him, she said. So 
So, was this Hadi Ghazmini a letter of living? Yes. Was he an elder? No. So, let's find out what's going on. When Baha'i Faith starts, it starts with Bab, who is the manifestation of God and the founder of the Babi Faith. Not Baha'i Faith, Babi Faith. Which was about, you know, 19 years reigning. He had his disciples, 18, one, 18 with him become 19. They were called what? Letters of Living. Now Baha'u'llah comes. Things get transferred in the Baha'i Faith. Let's see what happens in this transformation. The Bab was the manifestation of God in the Baha'i Faith. He becomes an elder of Baha'u'llah. There you go. The letters of the living, they became elder of Baha'u'llah. Elder is a recognized title in the Baha'i Faith and also in Christianity. Letters of Living is the title specific to the Babi religion, not Baha'i religion. This fellow, Hadi Ghazvini, was a letter of living because he believed in Bab. But this gentleman, when he came into Baha'i faith, it fell down. He cannot be called an elder. Simply because the writings of Baha'u'llah is against him. Calls him enemy of God. Therefore, his mission, his responsibility of as, as an elder was given to the guy who built the first Baha'i temple. So, Mr. Wakilo Dole, which is the Elect appointed by Abdul Baha, named by Abdul Baha, as an elder, he cannot be called letter of living. Because in the Babi religion, he had no title. He turns into Baha'i faith, he becomes an elder. So, this last recognized elder of Abdul Baha, besides the letter of living and the Bab, was a Baha'i. He was recognized as an elder. We cannot call him a letter of living. He was not one of the 18s. By the same token, Hadi Ghazvini, who was a Babi, believed in Bab, and he was a letter of living, cannot be called an elder. Because elders, by Abdul Baha says what? They're holy persons. They sit on the throne eternal throne, they reign eternally. Of course this son of a gun was not one of them. Participated in poisoning Baha'u'llah and the other Baha'is. This guy was completely out of it. Now you are trying to be stubbornly insisting that no, he was. Well then what are you trying to tell me? You are trying to tell me that because you have to now accept whatever Abdul Baha says about him. Then this fellow is included in being a holy, is being a great person, an eternal reigner, is the enemy of Baha'u'llah can be included in his titles. If that is the case, you're out of your mind. You guys are then totally altered. I have no discussion with you. But if you feel the paradox and you want to know, this is why I am here. I am the elder of God. And I'm telling you how it works. This fellow as a Bobby, we agree. His services in the Bob services was all recognized. We have no problem with it. In the Baha'i realm, he died out. He wasn't. It's very simple. Judas, the fellow who went against Jesus Christ, all his life before he did the act is acceptable. After that, it's not. We have many covenant breakers who are great Baha'is and did a lot of services. 
We recognize all the services of Mace and Rimi at the time of Shoghi Effendi. We do call him hands of the cause. But after he said he is not, insisted on that he's something else, he basically resigned from it. When we say Mace and Rimi hands of the cause, we mean when he was, not after. After that, he just was a covenant breaker, a sick man. Anything that has been bestowed upon the hands of the cause does not include him. And so, and so, and so forth. It's not very difficult, isn't it? So, there is another point worthy of mentioning. There are two books here. It's called Amr Khalq. And then there is this book uh, called Maide Osman. In three places here, Abdul Ba says there are five elders to be known. In these places, which is one of these quotations with the extra word, that Abdul Ba says four elders, not five. So what am I what am I supposed to take? three places that he says is there is five and one place that he says there's four discrepancies what do we do i looked at the writer of these books and i know this one they say that we have he says mr ashraf Havari. he says i have collected these writings from private manuscripts that I could, for the best of my ability, to compare it to the original ones. If there are any mistakes, discrepancies, do not put it on my fault. He says that. And the quotation that is in here is being used from this book. Therefore, according to the writer, He's not very sure. Unless and until we find the original writing of Abdul Baha in his handwriting, because he didn't have an scribe, so he always did his own work. And I have all of his writings, his own hand. But there are other people they wrote this thing. That it says there is four, then those that they say five take precedent. But by the principles in the Baha'i faith that we have, is like this, all the religions. The present word of the Prophet, or interpreters, takes over the word in the past. For example, the Baha'i faith, Baha'u'llah revealed the prayer with nine sessions. It was a stolen. Gone. Baha'u'llah revealed a new one, shorter one. Now, if it's an old one, it's found, it's abrogated. The new one that he revealed is the one. Why? Because the new one takes over the past. So it proceeds. So, the word of Shoghi Effendi is the final divine word. And he says, so far, we do not know who these five others are. Are he says five. Take it from him that there is five, not four. Okay. So the writing of Shoghi Effendi is on his own not quotation or a reference quotation marks of Abdul Baha as he uses italic words usually when he brings quotation this is not a quotation is a reference to the writing of Abdul Baha which he says himself there has to be five that we don't know and five is the only acceptable one so we ask universal laws of justice that okay if there are 18 letters of the living and then there is uh, Bob that's 18 and according to you there was the guy who built uh, 
Mashtab al Askar or the Baha'i Temple, therefore is 20. Eh? Why don't you offend this is 5? And you guys say 4. Between you, the universal laws of justice, insist on 4. And Shogu Effendi, who says it's five, which one should I take? You or Universal Laws of, universal laws of Justice? I have to take yours or the one that Shogu Effendi says. You yourself say Universal Laws of Justice, my dear friends up there, you know. You guys are saying the interpretations of the Shogu Effendi is the statement of truth that cannot be varied. If this is the case, why are you changing five to four? Are you politely saying Shobi Effendi missed something here? He didn't know there was another one? What was the answer to me? The answer is the reason that Shobi Effendi did not mention these 20th elders, there must be a divine wisdom. Well, that is an interpretation. Again, you are not allowed to interpret as universal as just. You also are not allowed to change the word five, which you yourself say in your letter to me, that has to be five into four. Look, guys, please, it's not very difficult. Between Universal Laws of Justice and Shovey Effendi, I have to take the word of Shovey Effendi. Because if I don't, then might as well let the Baha'i faith go and you guys are the new revealers of the faith, whatever you want to call it. And if you follow the Shogi Effendi, as you say you should, well, therefore take it. He says it's five. You say that it is five. Then don't bring the reason that five means four. Because that's an interpretation if you say five is four. That's clear change, you know, at the digits. What am I supposed to do, you know? Do you see my predicaments? I thought to bring this up. Oh God, this uh, young Baha'i, I've credited him with uh, serious study in the fact that from that the writing of Shogu Effendi, we cannot extrapolate a general guardianship uh, that is different from previous statement of Shogu Effendi. According to him, they're all the same. But then I brought the reasons that why then, if there is no guardians, there should be guardianship continues. And I brought all the reasons previously to you. God bless you and uh, Allah Akbar.